Good evening, everybody. It's David Schlothauer here in the home weather office for October 1st on this fantastic Sunday, 2023. In today's update, we are going to keep an eye on the weather pattern really closely as we have a weather system across the western U.S. that is going to be moving into the northern plains. This is going to trigger another big Arctic air mass that is going to swing across the Midwest into the northern plains and bring temperatures well below average with much warmer weather back west. Also, if you want to check out the weather photography 4K drone YouTube channel that I created a few days days ago, please consider subscribing and liking the channel as well because I will have two videos a week on this channel on drone footage, on sunsets, foliage, weather patterns, and much more including hyperlapses. You all do not want to miss it, so if you are new, please consider subscribing and subscribing to the David Schlothauer channel. There will be those links in the description below this video. Taking a look at your current weather pattern right now on the evening of October 1st, the 10th month of the year, and we could see a big old fat ridge of high pressure that is dominating much of the eastern U.S. with dry conditions, sunny skies, maybe a few wisps of cirrus clouds from time to time, but otherwise, this whole weather pattern right here is looking bone dry. There's nothing out there at all. No severe weather, no rain to talk about, only some severe weather here over the southern high plains, but that's really about it. But there are weather pattern changes coming that you all need to be aware of. We have this trough that has impacted California yesterday, brought some rain to some areas of the state, including for Nevada. This system here is going to be on its way to the northeast, and it is going to be also bringing some much colder temperatures with another shot at seeing at least some rainfall for these locations. More on that in the global computer model department. This is the 12Z Euro model for October 1st, 2023, and this is a forecast for this afternoon, and we can clearly see we have showers, we got some snow for the higher elevations there for California, a kind of an unusual weather pattern for early October, the first day, and we're seeing fall to winter-like temperatures and precipitation in some of these areas of the higher elevations. But don't worry, it's only going to get more bigger once the system ejects off the Rockies into the northern plains. And let's kind of move that forward. This is for Tuesday, October the 3rd. And yep, there's that system that we talked about. We got some showers, we got some thunderstorms, might even see some severe weather along to go with that. Maybe some hail, some damaging winds, some tornadoes for sure uh, with this system. And then here comes the cooler air that is going to nosedive into the Midwest, bringing some of the coldest temperatures so far this fall-like season. That system moves through, and here comes the cooler air by the end of this week. So by Thursday night into Friday, October the 6th, we got um, that cold front that is going to be draped across Indiana, the Ohio Valley. This is going to bring probably between a tenth of an inch to maybe a quarter of an inch of rain. Still bone dry, though. I mean, this is only going to help a little bit. Because once this drier air moves in out of the north, it is really going to be a big problem. Uh, it's going to be cooler, of course, but the air is going to be so dry. And we could st um, see some fire danger concerns for the Midwest because the drought is just absolutely substantial. In fact, there are many areas in the northern plains as well as the deep south that are under extreme to exceptional drought. And exceptional is the worst drought category that you could ever face right now and that's for louisiana that's for southern mississippi texas look at how dry it's been over um, iowa as well as nebraska kansas even indiana also really getting the drought in pretty quickly here and if the, these conditions continue i won't be surprised by this thursday you could have a d2 which is a severe drought declared for central indiana so big time drier conditions really on the way and this is going to lead to a lot of those problems by october 7th really dry conditions returning for the midwest and for the southeast i mean this weather pattern is as calm and dead as you all can see because I mean, we could have big storms this time of the year, you know, but it's pretty dead. And that's because large-scale ridging is going to dominate the area, including for the western U.S. Really not much to talk about. I mean, 
It's going to be the first time in a while that I do not upload every day because the weather pattern is just so darn dead. I mean, there's nothing to really monitor much out there. It's so dead that some portions of the U.S. might not see a single drop of rainfall in the next 10 days. Those areas include perhaps Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, the Carolinas, including for Virginia. I mean, wow. The next 10 days, not a drop potentially in sight, which is really unusual. I mean, you should get at least a hundredth of an inch, maybe a couple of hundredths, but you know that white area there indicates not going to see any rain. Whereas maybe Indiana might get up to a quarter of an inch to a half an inch, but sadly that's going to come just with one storm system and a lot of this will be extremely far below average per 10 days. Even California could get more rain than portions of the southeast and the upper midwest like the Great Lakes, which is a sign that El Nino is trying to do work its magic around the area. Looking at the, pre um, the amount of rainfall anomalies here, this is very important because the southeast is going to be very dry over the next several days. I mean, all the brown that you see on your screen here really dissects below average precipitation anomalies. That means if you get like an inch and a half of rain, right, on average for the 10-day period, you're going to see probably less than a tenth of an inch. All right, so it's going to be far below average, and that's going to make the drought situation worse, especially over Louisiana and Mississippi and Arkansas, where you don't want the drought to get any worse. But unfortunately, looks like that's going to happen, whereas the Pacific Northwest will actually get a fair share of wetter weather with above normal precipitation anomalies that is being indicated. And we'll be kind of dissecting into the Climate Prediction Center to illustrate with what I mean by that. Even Central California going to get some hopeful news. Now, of course, with the dry conditions and warm temperatures, that's only going to make the drought situation worse. Here's a look at the temperature forecast on the Euro model for this afternoon. And of course, it's been a really warm day if you're in the high plains. Plains, the southern plains temperatures in the mid to upper 80s really warm it's only going to get warm for tomorrow and that's because of our death ridge that is going to be building on top of you all but it's going to be a short-lived death ridge as that trough like we talked about is going to be moving through but look at tomorrow really warm here some 90s some mid 90s for texas on the second day of October, we got widespread 80s across the northern tier of the United States, including for the Great Lakes. Um, if you are, say, in Minnesota, Wisconsin, low to mid 80s are in the forecast. And while that seems like, well, that's a nice day, these temperatures could be 30 plus degrees above normal. So certainly some records, maybe near all time records for the month of October cannot be ruled out in this portion of the country. And then by Tuesday, still really warm. By Wednesday, the cooler weather arrives and you can see that really shape up. I mean, by the end of the work week, but um, you can see temperatures in the upper uh, 50s to lower 60s. And then look at this for Indiana. You're going to love seeing some upper 50s to lower 60s during the day for your Friday as that cooler air finally arrives. But look at that for California, for the desert southwest. You might squeeze out into the triple digits. I mean, that's really uncommon. You do get up to 100 once in a while in October for the Central Valley. But... We might see temperatures between 100 to 105 degrees, which is pretty immense. That's pretty hot for October standards for California. And then hopefully by the end of the forecast period, we will lose some of that summer heat and hopefully transition for sure into fall towards the end of the forecast. Now those anomalies, not looking very pretty at all. This is the one day average temperature anomaly. So instead of just looking at hour by hour, we're going to kind of blend everything together and show you the temperature anomalies. And yeah, a lot of red on your screen, which indicate well above average temperatures. And yeah, there's your 27 degree risk there of temperatures being above normal. And that will continue all the way through the next, um, say four to five days, and then the cooler air arrives. And you can see that blue patch, those temperatures could be five to almost 10 degrees below normal across the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and including for Texas. So finally some relief folks on the way, 
But of course, like we've talked about in past updates, when I do these US forecasts, these Arctic blasts will be short-lived because it's going to warm up right after that. Again, the warmer weather going to return towards the end of the forecast model period. This is days 9 and 10. If that's not enough, we can look at the ensemble forecast really illustrating temperatures that could be above normal all right this is all 51 members this includes the the deterministic showing those temperatures that could be really far above normal and this is days 10 and 11 you might see temperatures 15 to almost 20 degrees above normal by the middle of october so yes a temporary cool down will be followed by substantial amounts of warming by the middle to the end of October. It could be a warm one. So looking at the geopotential height, so the color shading indicates your anomalies, all right? And the lines, of course, equal, um, kind of correspond to your geopotential heights in decameters, all right? Simple way to put it, when you have higher heights, the temperatures are warmer, right? Because there's more air. We have a warming air mass, right? Versus lower heights, which means cooler temperatures, usually disturbing weather or weather disturbances that move through. So going forward here, this is October 3rd, the 4th, the 5th, you can see that ridge moves out and then we get this trough that moves through. And then again, this is the trough that's going to bring in the much cooler temperatures for your area. And then that's going to move out really quickly. So by October the 9th, we get this large scale ridge pattern back in the Midwest again. And this could again lead it to more drying, more warming. I mean, if this continues, I'm very sure a lot of areas such as Indiana, especially, and perhaps Illinois could end up getting into the extreme to exceptional drought category by December or by November. If this pattern does not change anytime soon with a lot of ridging, that is in place. So I'm just fingers crossed that you all there, including for Iowa, much of the Midwest section could get more hopeful rainfall because the drought is just really concerning me over Texas, over Louisiana. No, I'm not from Texas, nor do I live in Texas or Louisiana, but I do care about a lot of farmers, a lot of agriculture. It's just not good. It really isn't. And the we need that El Nino to work its magic so you all can get a lot of the rainfall down there in the deep south, the southeast, and the eastern seaboard. Well, New York has had historic amounts of rainfall, like, I mean, mass casualties, I believe, due to a lot of flooding over there uh, a couple of days ago. I was not able to cover it because I had other things going on, but don't worry, I'm aware of it. It's just unfortunate news. And we do live in this climate for extremes. And we have extreme rains for the Northeast, extreme warm and dry for the Midwest. It's just where we live in right now. And it's probably only going to get worse as the climate changes over hundreds of years. You know, I don't believe in global warming. I don't want to get into politics on the side of things. But I do believe our climate is changing in a way that we have not had substantial amounts of big heat waves in October than ever before. And we're seeing one of those right now taking place. I wanted to take a look at the Climate Prediction Center because it really illustrates with what we're about to deal with across much of the Western U.S. Big time warming is going to take place. Seattle, you have a 70% chance that you could have temperatures above normal. California running at 60%. But look at this, some temporary short-lived relief for the eastern half of the country with a 60% chance for you to see below average temperatures. But that's not going to stay. I promise you all that's going to get eroded by a ridge of high pressure and you can see that warming will take place now it does stay um, cooler than average if you are in the eastern portion of the u.s here like washington richmond charlotte new york but i mean 33 percent chance for you to see temperatures below average is not very likely it's a slim chance it's leaning below chance it's not like a 100% chance for below average like you could see with some of the biggest arctic outbreaks usually during the fall and winter season. Now, looking at the northern tier, a 70% chance over Bismarck Billings for above average temperatures. So again, that warmer weather will arrive yet again. You're not, you're just again, a short-lived relief for some of you all in the Midwest will be followed by some really warm weather. Week three to four is 
going to be kind of a mixed bag. You're looking at a th equal chance if you're in the Midwest, above average chances for the Great Lakes and the Northeast. Uh, probably going to be a warm one for a while for the West because, again, we have that large-scale fall-like pattern trying to set up. Now, precipitation, going to be a very dry one over Minneapolis if you're in Des Moines, Ma uh, Madison, Chicago, in Illinois, likely below average chances for uh, in the way of rainfall or snowfall, above average for Seattle, for Salem, Oregon, if you are in Tucson, Phoenix, Arizona, southern, southeast, or southwestern Texas, you have a leaning above chance for precipitation. And then looking at your 8 to 14 day forecast, you're looking at nearly uh, a slim or a, more like a slim chance for above average precipitation, but below average for the Midwest and or for the Northern Plains that should be in the Great Lakes with above average chances for the Pacific Northwest. Looking at the three to four week outlook, uh, I mean, for Indiana, portions there the next month could be below average chances. And that would really be bad for a lot of agriculture including for Southern Ohio, could be really dry for much of October. And then of course for Texas, you're looking at leaning above chances there for precipitation. Do I rarely stretch my uh, service out to a month? You can see here for the next month, all of October, all 31 days could feature a slim to likelihood chance for below average precipitation over Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, if you're in Tennessee, if you're in uh, Georgia, if you're in Mississippi, Alabama, really, really bad. I mean, I feel bad for farmers, for corn crops and everything. A lot of irrigation enhancement to that because you're not going to see the natural beauty, beauty of any storms out there. You might see one or two in the next month, but really trending drier than normal versus whereas the four corners can be wetter than normal. Before I do in the video, I do have a few announcements to share with you. So just bear with me if you all can, because this is important. This is part of branding myself. This is part of the whole business side of YouTube things. So first of all, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, if you want to become a member today to get members only content, yes, you get members only content if you um, if you pay uh, on a monthly basis and you can get it right here. Members only, um, drone stuff, hyperlapses, much more for the channel. I'm just, I'm excited to present you all that. You know, I've been looking forward to the drone and I hope you all like it a lot because we're gonna be providing more members only content for the channel in days to come. So if you're not a member now, please consider doing so. Um, you can be a tropical storm tier, which is 99 cents a month versus I think I got a tier for $75 a month. If you want to support me more higher in that range of things. Of course, I got my weather photography 4k. Now I'm also uploading on here. It's not to be confusing. The videos that you get for members only are actually delayed over a month on the Weather Photography 4K channel. All right, I have a lot lined up. They're already scheduled, but they're only uploaded twice a week. So if you want it sooner and you're just desperate, I want to see that sunset or something, you got to become a member of my channel on my main to get that. But otherwise, uh, one other thing I wanted to share with you all too is I do have a Facebook page. I haven't really promoted this actually very much. Um, it is the uh, NorCal Weather Center office, weather near you. It's the Sacramento Weather Center on Facebook. So if you want to follow me there, we're up to 165 members. And I, you know, I like doing these. This is kind of like the National Weather Service style where I do the discussion kind of day-by-day -day breakdowns and everything. So if you want to uh, follow me there, it is 100% free. You can do so. There is a link in the description below this video. Now, with all the promotion out of the way, if you all did enjoy today's detailed weather outlook and discussion on the U.S. with the upcoming crazy weather pattern that we're tracking, please consider subscribing if you're new, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with your, uh, with your friends and family. And I'll be back with you more Possibly tomorrow with this quiet weather pattern. I don't know how often I'll be uploading, but hopefully every other day at the very most. But that's going to do it. Thank you all for watching.